Short Fuse is still kicking and we've got some new updates to share. I'm Charles and last month we shared updates to our wires, explosion effects, and the computer. This time we've added and tweaked our tools and added a few new level types. Let's get started with a look at our new multi-stage levels. In Short Fuse, a level is another word for the that's dropped. We're just now realizing that that word may not be the best for YouTube, so level it is. If you've seen any of our other devlogs, you'll have a general idea about the core types. We have the standard levels, like the potato and dynamite. These comprise of most of our levels and don't contain any special twists. Once they're diffused, you're good to go. And then we also have the coca nuke, which creates another level when diffused, just like a Matryoshka doll. Then we have the non-diffusable level type. Right now this is only the jack-in-the-box, where it needs to be continuously cranked to prevent its timer from reaching zero. And now we have two new types to share. These are the torque and multi-part levels. The torque level uses a rotation or stretch when the wire is snipped. Think of a spring bouncing out when the tension is released. And the multi-part level allows us to create levels that change as they're diffused. Picture a box opening up or the doors on a car being opened. The idea is that these new level types will offer more variety and interesting player interactions. We're still working on the models for these new level types, so we just have this test footage to show, but we hope to share more details next month. Let us know what other types of items you like to see as levels in the comments. But for now, let's take a step back and hand it over to Max, so he can tell us about how we're making our devlogs. Hi, this is Max. Just a moment on making the devlogs as well. Uh, we always try to cover work that's been done in the previous month, so we're a decent bit ahead of what we put out there. There were a couple months recently where we were all particularly busy or the work getting done was design that was less appealing to show off, and so the devlogs were emptier, but we hope that they have more and exciting stuff for the rest of the year. Maybe we should have started uploading later, but we hope everyone's still interested It doesn't forget why they wishlisted short views or anything. Two months ago, we showed off our new wave generation system. One of the things we talked about was the ability to make presets. Presets are waves that are defined by us and are important so that we're able to curate different waves depending on the scenario. The tutorial is one big part where we want to be able to control exactly what the player encounters. One of the concerns for presets that extended its development time was how they would interact with the wave generation system. Should the preset adhere to the currently unlocked levels? And what happens if the preset isn't valid? These are addressed in the preset system such that levels can be individually marked with how they should react. We can tell a preset to be skipped entirely if something isn't valid, to use a backup, or to wait until it is valid. Additionally, we have the ability to specify a random level or segment, which means that presets can partially use the wave generation system. And if you're interested in how it all works, here's some details on the implementation. Feel free to skip ahead if you're not. Okay. Presets are stored as scriptable objects with a separate scriptable object for the main preset, segment, and level. The wave generation system is used to check if a preset is valid and is handled on the local level first. This means that if a preset is marked to skip if invalid, but some part in between has a valid backup, that preset will still pass validation. Each option on preset could also choose to ignore validity and to be either a custom or random value. Random values use the wave generation system, so they're guaranteed to be valid while the custom ones aren't. And then on our end, we display this information through a series of custom editors created with UI Toolkit to take care of the tedious sides of things. And there you have it, a pretty high level view of the preset system and how it works. And of course, all of these checks brings a lot of performance concerns. Some were addressed as the system was created. For example, I moved a lot of these calculations to background threads, but especially for a system like this, we're going to keep optimizing it all the way through development. The end goal is that we're able to make all of these calculations across the presets and generation system without any noticeable lag or delay on the player's end. So we've still got a little while to go, but it's looking promising. And with that, our June update is complete. There are definitely some big changes and we're continuing the trend into next month. So stay tuned for our next devlog and weekly shorts where we'll be tackling the transition from the diffusal track to the game show. Thanks for watching and see you in the next devlog.